Good day to you. My name is Michael Patrick Brewer. I'm a combat veteran of the United States Marine Corps. I was a grunt with the 7th Marines in the Republic of Vietnam, 68 and 69. On a daily basis, I contributed to General Westmoreland's mathematical Ford Motor Brain wish to deliver large numbers in the battle of body counts. Dead, that is. Or dead all the way, as we used to say in the Nam. We fulfilled his wish and delivered tons of dead bodies for him to count up on the evening news. It was as if the general had rendered the war to be like an NFL football game. The biggest score wins. We won in spades. Dead galore. Big score. Except Ho Chi Minh won the overall game. Not the battle, mind you, because we never lost a battle. But Uncle Ho had infiltrated our individual and collective psyches. He used a different kind of abacus. We killed bodies, he killed minds. Is this happening again? I'm an Irish Catholic, making me fiercely loyal, lyrical, and pre-blessed for bellicose behavior. Between the church and the Marine Corps, I thought for sure I could scoop my ticket to heaven. Little did I know I had to pass through hell first. I do not believe our Creator put us on earth to eliminate our own species. They say that only the dead know the end of war. I know war, intimately. That is why I am only half dead as a result. I am equally half alive. I am not sure which half the, media, the medals and the ribbons are for. Maybe neither. Maybe they are for my dead comrades, so I can remember them for the rest of my life. Is it happening again? The Department of Defense, norm formerly known as the Department of War before they applied Orwellian language, has rendered me damaged goods. In 2002, they awarded me my last promotion, 100% disabled, permanent and total, it's called. How do you like that? Defending your country almost renders you incapable of performing as one of its citizens. Funny, eh? Seems to be the pinnacle of irony that I was once paid about $250 a month to kill people, and now I get $3,500 to be passive. So killing truly is cheap, but living with it is expensive. Will we see a day when it is just too damned expensive to pay for the aftermath of war, or will we just borrow more money from China to pay for it? I can see the headlines now, in the year of 2012. China finances U.S. Veterans Administration who will we be fighting for then? My mother taught her sons to always pay attention to the three-letter F word, not the four-letter F word. Always ask yourself, when in a quandary, who is this for? Do we know? Are we fighting for our own sovereignty or dominion over world resources? Who is this for? I will defend my country in its grace-filled and spiritually-induced constitution to the day I die. Yes, I am indeed one of those Semper Fi Marines, but in the literal sense and in the strain of General Smedley Butler, meaning no bullshit, please. I also take the Marine Corps motto to heart, first to fight for right and freedom and to keep our honor clean. It is that clean honor thing that inspires me to speak to you today. As I am eminently more concerned with my soul and an informational legacy of the truth for my children and grandchildren than anything that may be considered politically correct or motivated by man's search for power and dominion. I am a Marine who wants to protect the beaches of our nation's soul. Soul power will ultimately always prevail. Gandhi proved that with taking on single-handedly the entire British Empire. Soul power is renewable, while brute force often expires under the weight of its own motives. Force aligns itself with war. Power aligns itself with the soul. Gandhi did not confront the empire head on. He simply made them look at themselves. Is it happening again? My hope and daily prayer is that our nation will one day be more guided by the quest to save our souls and environment than the drive for power and dominion over the world's resources, which is by nature a form of idolatry of self and does not sit well with our Creator. I know, he told me so, just like he speaks to our president. So now, I put to you my questions. 
I expect no answers. No answers might be a good thing, as the polemic and the polarity could cease, and possibly the questions themselves could be a catalyst for a transforming paradigm shift away from the stagnant thinking and unenlightened leadership of the past seven years. So like Columbo would say, I just have a few more questions. Why do we so often lie about the motives to war? And I do mean the collective we, not just the United States. World history has demonstrated and proven in retrospect that the conditions that lead to war are frequently confabulated and designed to mislead and distract the commoner. So why is it, really now, or how is it that we citizen soldiers who place our body and soul in harm's way for our country are so distracted from being able to embody the full and accountable truth of our leaders' motives? Is not the antecedent condition of a just war a truthful one? We now know unequivocally that the Gulf of Tonkin incident that sparked our entrance into Vietnam, which like now was never a declared war, actually never occurred. It was a lie. In a nation that prides itself on the rule of law and its Christian heritage, how can we live with endless impunity and not expect some future blowback? Even the generals take this into account when they go into battle. Is it all happening again? We now know that the existence of the weapons of mass destruction was a poker tactic on behalf of Saddam Hussein. In short, it was a lie. Expect blowback. We now know that the Iraq defector, codename Curveball, was bogus, and a man named Chalabi juked the entire Western world with his sham defectors, and we capitulated to yet in another string of confabulated pretexts for war. All the major media had to retract their stories about Curveball and his phony defectors. He lied, we sighed, and rushed right off to war. Blowback is on the way. Is it all happening again? We have been so misled and distracted that it is virtually impossible for the working woman and man to discern between story and valid information. We have sold our soul to linguistic masters. In biblical times, there was a name for that, the devil. And like the Rolling Stones tune, Symphony for the Devil, I hope you guess my name. I hear Rovian whispers in the wind. So what is the price of victory? A nation of maimed men and women that are disabled for life and may well break the bank of the Veterans Administration? One thing has never changed. America has always been blessed with courageous warriors who are ready, willing, and highly skilled. Yet it is my belief that those who have borne the cost of war should be doing so for our nation, its constitution, and its independence. Is this what is happening in Iraq, where GW swore we would never engage in nation building? I think not. It is still an undeclared war that is conducted by the military-industrial complex that would make Dwight Eisenhower cringe. It is arranged and conducted by an elite cabal of men who are building a system that will trash our constitution, our sovereignty, and supplant it with one world government. It is accomplished by planned wars of assimilation, they're called, and its end game is a world controlled by the United Nations. This is not your daddy's war. Why do you think that no one is asked to sacrifice anything for the war effort? Well, duh, it's not a declared war. No, rev no Rosie the Riveter here, because the power elite no longer need the people of this nation to decide anything. The United States has not filed a declaration of war against any nation since June 5, 1942. Why? Because our sleuthful Kabbalists have found a way to sidestep Article 1 of the Constitution of the United States, stating the Congress shall have the power to declare war, and the War Powers Resolution Act of 1973 that limits the power of the President to act unilaterally, unilaterally has now been skirted in such a way as to render our entire democracy a sham. It is now called authorizations of force. Ain't linguistics great? You can call a duck a goose in the name of war, and only the devil knows who done it. It seems that only war widows and combat veterans know the truth. Look for the blowback. Who is this war for? Is it happening again? 
Which truth do we tell our grandchildren? The official one or the one from the widows and the veterans? My name is Mike Brewer and this has been my commentary.